of our sovereign Savior, our Lord and liberator, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Sherman Joel Fort, senior servant that is pastor here at the Word Church, also known as Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Listen, today is a good day. And it's a great day because God is God. You can just start and stop right there. God is God. And when I say God, to not have any confusion, I'm confusion, I'm speaking of the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sherman Fort. And so uh, today is our 34th church anniversary. It's 34 years now that the Lord has blessed us. And so I thought in an impromptu way, I want to say that so that these who are on stage get a pass. They just came up because I asked them to come up. And instead of doing Sunday school during this hour, we're having a conversation. Just some highlights. I emphasize some highlights of church over the years. I'm going to whisper a word of prayer and then introduce these wonderful people to you. Then we're just going to talk together. Let's pray. Father, how we thank you and we praise you afresh for your love, mercy, and grace and for the fact that you brought us together. So God, I pray now that you would bless this conversation, that your kingdom come in us and your will be done in us for the ladies and gentlemen who are on this stage today. Uh, may we reminisce in a righteous and in a rewarding way as we uh, think back on all the blessings you have bestowed on us through the years in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I want to welcome to the stage uh, to my left immediately is my youngest daughter, uh, Kennedy uh, Lachey. And um, then to her right are the Campbells. That is the Reverend Lorraine Campbell and the Reverend Anthony Campbell. And then Deacon Bill, Quitman Bill Warren, uh, who is one of the trustees at our church and also a deacon at our church. And then Deacon Larry Davis, who leads our safety ministry and other things at our church. I should say that the Campbells are like unto uh, second tier. They just will do, preach, teach, lead in a number of areas of ministry, and I thank God for all of them. So thank you all for being here this morning, and thank you for joining me in this impromptu way. Uh, 34 years, 34 years, 34 years. Uh, the Lord has brought us from, old song, Dick and Davis, from a mighty long way. Um, I want to start with... Um, Deacon Davis and Deacon Bill Warren, who have the longest tenure here of the persons on the stage. Uh, Deacon Davis, far in. Man, hold your mic up real good and, and give us any opening comments, man, memories you have. Well, you already mentioned, uh, well, you already mentioned about the Board of Realties, Realtors building where we started out. I remember those days. I got a sore back from those days. <laughs> so those days are implanted well in me. But God blessed during that time period because the church grew. Just, I, I can't even think of the word. But I thank God that I was able to be a part of that. And I thank God that I'm still here. Deacon Warren. So first time I saw Larry, he was hurting his back. <laughs> and I looked around and said, why is nobody helping Larry? <laughs> I mean, church would end and everybody would just scatter to the winds. Me, at the time, I'd come from, um, just come back in Arizona from working in um, Zurich. And I had been previously a deacon over at, uh, with Reverend Black at South Phoenix Black who was actually installed pastor for it. I was at the service. I had no idea I would become one of his deacons and trustees at that time. But I was watching Larry. He's pulling what we used to call the snake. <laughs> it was an electrical cord about that fat around that we had to put up and put out every Sunday to have audio. Yeah. And I just like, I said, somebody's got to help. I've been helping Larry for the last 27 years. <laughs> Praise God, I'm still able, and we all still here. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, let me just say this on that. Some of you don't know this. Uh, it, the address is 1363 South Vineyard Road in Mesa, Arizona. That's where we met initially. It was then owned by the Board of Realtors Building uh, uh, people. 
don't know if y'all know, they sold that building since then. Yes, they sold it a few years ago. But we met in a place where there was a partition. And when we first started, we only occupied half the room, and you guys remember this. And then we had to open it up, and we, op we occupied the whole room, and then we switched the direction of it, and it was a wonderful time. I remember coming in for worship, and there was a party there the night before. And there would be balloons in the ceiling and melted ice sculptures sometime on the floor. And the guy who was supposed to be doing it, not from us, but hired by that facility, sometime we found him asleep, you know, in a chair because he was exhausted. And we would come in early and have to do all of that. And we had to set up and tear down every single Sunday. And that was one of, that's one of my memories. But it was a, but it was a good time. Pastor, pastors forgetting sometimes we had to take up the dance floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. So when they had an event that required a dance floor, yeah, yeah, the brothers took up the dance floor. Boy, some saints just could have danced on the floor, but the brothers took up the, uh, the dance floor. Man, I, I remember that with, with fond memories. Um, I want to move to my daughter, Ken. Kennedy, um, get your mic and get ready to talk in it. Is it. Make sure it's on. And then I want to I wanna ask you, so you were born... Uh, when you were born, your, your father was already pastoring. So what are your memories, uh, not over 34 years because you're not, you're not that age, but what are your highlights, your memories, your earliest memories of church? Um, it's so funny Miss Eileen's here because <laughs> those are like all my like memories of Miss yeah. Eileen and being back there. And Gabre actually and I, uh, when service ended, we were t singing the jam theme song. Like, oh, yeah, we you know, just, are jam. And we love to sing. We worship the Lord because he is king. I forget the rest, but I remember that part. All the rest, I got down in my heart, jam. Yeah, I remember that. Good. that okay, go ahead. Good. That's good. But, um, yeah, you want to like, sing it? No. <laughs> I, if you know, you know. But, um, no, just like the best memories of like growing up in like children's church. And me and my best friend, she didn't go here, but we were just talking about that the other day. Just, like, kids today, like, don't know stuff like that. Like, you know, and, like, we just built so many great friendships and, like, the best memories. So it's really that. And then, you know, hearing you preach, I don't think I understood all the way what you really did. <laughs> I would just be so exhausted by you preaching every Sunday, and I'd be like, why are we here again? But, um, <laughs> but no, seriously, the best memories. And, um, yeah, like, Children's Church is really, like, my core like, memory, though. Like, everything I learned. And let me just say this. Yeah, that deserves a, a praise to the Lord. Let me just say this about Miss Eileen. So Miss Eileen is not only here now, but Miss Eileen's place, uh, her, 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 her teaching and training, uh, school, preschool, all the way up for children. Uh, matter of fact, Eileen just went back to um, uh, the private sector. Can I call it that, Eileen? The private sector of educating children. If any of you out there are looking for a woman who loves the Lord, whose heart is children and will choose children over most adults, I think, every day, then you should call the church, 480-835-6320, and we will connect you with Eileen if you're looking for someone. I really mean that. Uh, both, of, both of our girls went to your school when they were itty-bitty. And so I, I just thought about that. Okay, Ken, thanks for that. And I may call Gab up here, too. Uh, 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 Reverend Campbell and Reverend Campbell, um, you have been here the shortest, but yet have had a wonderful impact. Uh, would you just share your thoughts and your memories, Reverend Anthony Campbell and Reverend Lorraine Campbell from Jamaica and from Trinidad? And so just share with us your thoughts over the years. Well, I was in, originally I was in Texas and we were in transition and so my wife had some experience in Texas that she decided I, I do not want to live in Texas anymore. So she came back to Arizona. And um, so I kept waiting for her to come back. And it seems like she she's not, would return back. But one of the most important things is that we have always been in ministry. Ministry was our life. So having to, having to make a decision pastor to leave the ministry in Texas where I was after the pastor I was the person there all right um, but coming to the word church 
I found it to be one of the best ministry to be involved in, to, to be able to serve pastor and to serve under your ministry and leadership. And so being here, it looked like I never left Texas because I picked ministry up and I continue until present day time. Amen. Well, the most pleasant thing for me with the word church, the very first day I came here, still this day resonates in my mind many times because I remember very day when I came, church was filled with people. I sat way in the back over in the corner over there, and I kept looking around. I'm like, wow, the pleasantness of the people here, the church. When I went, and then when Pastor got up and started preaching, I'm like, this is his place. That's the memory I have of hearing the word of God from the Bible, not just because of man's word, but what he said resonated till this day in my mind, knowing that he's saying, thus says the Lord. And that's one of the biggest things that I till this day still appreciate and love the fact that he still comes up and says, thus says the Lord. And that's why I'm still here at this church. Not that I don't love you guys now, but I love just being here because of those things. And anyway you go to church, you want to make sure you hear, thus says the Lord. See, and so that's one of the things. I sit there and I'm, I'm, I resonate in my mind many times that day. And thank God for bringing me here. So it is not by trust, but by the Lord himself brought me here. So that's my biggest memory. Praise here. God. Uh, well, you all see what I just did. I just uh, saw that Gabre is still here. This is Sister Gabre L. Jackson. Uh, G-A-B-R-A-E. No, G-A-B-R-A. Then her middle name really is L. Yeah, so... When you put her first name together and her middle name together, it's Gabrielle. But, you know, that's kind of kind of how we roll uh, in families. <laughs> Last name, Jackson. So Gabrielle has been here for many years, moved to L.A. and all that. Gab, just share memories that you have of church over uh, the years. Well, I have so many. Um, I'm actually 34, so the same age as the church. I've been here pretty much my whole life. And um, I would say the thing, okay, so definitely the youth ministry, the children's ministry. I remember Sister Debbie Davis teaching, um, Sister Jeanette Robinson teaching, my sister teaching. And at the old building, we would um, go out every morning and sing songs before we would start Sunday school, which was always so fun. And it was just so cool to be in, like, to graduate from the youth to TLC, <laughs> which was Teens Lifting Christ, and it was just like, as soon as I turned 13 and I got to go to the teens class, it was just like, oh, so exciting. <laughs> um, and um, I remember you used to do the two-minute testimonies. Do you remember that? It was really fun, and like, I mean, as kids, we were allowed to go up there if we had a testimony from the week, and I remember just, it would be so exciting, and we'd have something to go up there and say. Um, and then I remember moving here to this building. That was such a big celebration for us. It was like, I think for the whole month of January, did we do like, a, uh, we had musicals and yeah, it was a really uh, special time. And um, like Kennedy said, like I met all of my best friends here. My whole family came here. So it was just like, church is fun, church is exciting. and. As we've all gone out into the world, it really was like Pastor Ford did a good job of instilling, like, train up a child in the way they should go because we all Amen. have come back or remained, even if we're not at Canaan, the word, um, still, like, rooted in the Lord, in Christ, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's all pleasant. Let me just say, so I'm really excited about this. That, that, that was really good, Gab. I remember, let's transition, everyone, to, to Bill and Larry and to... Campbells and everyone else. We were in the Board of Realtors building. I think it was 14 years. I think it was around 14 years we were over there. We were miraculously given this property. So we have 3.4 acres of property for $1. That's the testimony. That God gave us this, Eileen, for $1, four quarters, 100 pennies, 10 dimes, 250 cent pieces. I mean, God gave us 3.4 acres for a dollar. And the only reason we paid a dollar is because when we went down to the city office, the person behind the counter said, well, there has to be some kind of a transaction that's financial. And so they said, um, Pastor, Pastor, you got a dollar? I said, yeah. 
And that's how this happened. And so I want to give God glory for that. It's a miraculous story. It's a miraculous story. Gav, say something just real quick uh, about you. Um, I'm moved by this conversation about people over the years. Um, and just, just do it for me, okay? You don't know, you know, you know, you know what I'm going to say, but just name them if you can remember. So just list the countries you have since lived in and visited uh, since, you know, your adulthood. Okay. <laughs> I've lived in uh, Spain and Finland um, and visiting uh, Canada, Jamaica, which Pastor Ford and this church. Um, I have to go like, uh, China, um, Portugal, Germany, UK, well, England, I should say, and Ireland, um, Italy, France. Greece, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Norway, um, <laughs> Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Japan, um, Australia. I can't. No. You can't remember them all. So si I've been on six continents. Yeah, six continents. So various that. countries. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're going to take the big. Listen, I wanted her to share that because to me, that's a tremendous testimony. She's 12 years old, and so she's been to all of these countries. And I think it's a beautiful thing, Gab. I mean, very well-rounded, beautiful, saved, love the Lord, uh, just an awesome woman. And I think that that travel is a, is, is a main piece. Thanks for uh, being uncomfortable for me. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate it. Okay, um, now we're over here. So we were over there. We share some memories of that. Um, segue again. Gab Ray's grandparents, um, Deacon McClellan and Mother Lou Verna McClellan, uh, led our march. I wanted to march from Country Club here. <laughs> and they were like, Negro, have you lost your mind? And so, but I thought it was a good idea. I didn't think it was a long walk. But we ended up walking, I think, from the corner. Was it the corner? Yeah, okay. okay. And then we came over here. So, so Bill, share your memories on that. Yeah, Brett, it was your grandfather who cut, the, who cut the ribbon when we first moved into here. And so, Bill, and then Larry, we'll go back around. Bill. So yeah, I mean, we did what we called victory laps <laughs> around this church. It was on January 2004. Uh, it was a great day, great testimony. Before we even broke ground, we set up chairs outside over here on the grass here, what's now grass. It was dirt then. And we held service outside before we started breaking ground. Um, if you've never built a church, don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> Alicia Bikes and I were back and forth with bankers and construction managers. But it was all worth it. And a lot of you probably don't even know unless you were here. On this stage, under this paneling, there's scriptures all written under here. From all the people that were part of this church um, to help bless this church as it was being built. So if you ever pull this wood up... <laughs> You'll see my scripture over there. It's right, right over in the corner. That's good. <laughs> but yeah. and, and you know what? Really, too, we have it all over. All over. All yeah. over in the lobby, in the offices, because we had a little flood here. Uh, the, uh, our, what do you call that? The water heater? Water heater broke. Yeah. And then, um, and I'm glad I came in. I came in on a Saturday just to kind of do some stuff. And I was like, man, what is that? It looks strange. Because the lights are automatic. And uh, anyway, long story short, it was water, and we had to pull the carpet up. So when the people came to, what do they call that? When they, something with the R. Restoration. Where they, they did restoration and they pulled it up. And you could see all these scriptures. And I took a picture of your uh, grandmother and your grandfather's piece. It's on my phone right now. I'm going to give it to you today after church. And so people would just write a scripture and then they would write their name. And so that was a beautiful piece. Deacon Davis, any, any memories when we came here? Well, when we, we moved in here, when we built. Yes. Uh, Pastor Fort didn't mention about the travel beforehand. <laughs> Before we went from the north to the south to the east to the west, looking at buildings, looking yeah. at property, yeah. we even went to California. <laughs> so we did a lot of traveling before God said, okay enough. They're going to run themselves crazy. So God blessed us with this. 
but it was a the the high of being able to march in that you 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 those were biblical days when you have that kind of mountaintop experience and 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 it it is it's great when we can recapture some of that. So we got to keep on doing what God is telling us to do because we're going to recapture it again. It's going to get to that level again. We just got to keep keep doing what God is telling us to do. Good. That's good. Kennedy, any, any, do you have any memories? What, what, is your, what are your earliest memories? Uh, connected to the timeline I'm on now. So I know you mentioned earlier Miss Eileen and Children's Church and all that. Any other things from your, you're the youngest person on the stage, uh, but you have a unique view. You have a unique view. Any any other highlights just from church in general, um, being here, uh, anything connected to church? Well, it's funny because when you were talking, I thought about um, like our fam, like our actual family didn't really come to the church that often, but I was thinking about one, the time when Jada, who's my little cousin, came, and um, she screamed when she walked in, hi, Uncle Sherman, like in the middle of service, and we were like, oh, my God, be quiet. And then, um, but then Auntie Arnita, the one time she came here, and, well, not one time, but my Aunt Arnita, who passed away a couple years ago, she came here, and in the middle of my dad preaching, she starts getting up, and we're like, Auntie Arnita, what are you doing? And she walks down the middle aisle and starts taking pictures of my dad while he was preaching, and we were like, Arnita, sit down. <laughs> and it was just so, like, funny and embarrassing. And then, but I don't, I don't really know my earliest memories, because I just feel like it's, like, always been, like, a part of my life, so I don't know if it's, like, a singular memory. I remember sitting with Auntie Candy all the time, because I, like, didn't like sitting in the front. And her and I would, we really got on the usher's nerves, her, me and Auntie Candy, because we just never stopped talking. And then, um, yeah, just children's church is what, like, I really remember sitting with mom. I remember, um, too, the, um, at the first when we marched over here, but um, Pastor Lewis and Miss Shelley. I was thinking yeah, about yeah, Miss Shelley yeah. um, uh, being alive. She passed away now, but um, I thought about her and um, Deacon Cullen sister of Khaled, like the best friend there is. And he would always give mom coupons yeah. <laughs> every single Sunday. And then he, uh, mom still talks about how um, she would like, my mom changed her hair all the time, oh well, growing up. And he was like, I never uh, know where you are. I can never recognize you to my mom <laughs> because she changed her hair so much. But um, yeah, mom singing and like just stuff like that. I remember like little, like I remember like minute things, not really like big singing. But uh, the, when Ron Days came to the church for the children. Oh, yes. oh I just looked at that picture. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. How many of you sitting out there remember the children's show Gullah Gullah Island? Come yes. and let's play together in the bright sunny weather. Let's all go to Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah. So, so Ron Days, I'm a, I'm a cartoon lover, and we, we contacted him, and he came to the church. Yes. And did our children's uh, day or whatever it was that weekend. That was, that was good, huh? Y'all remember that? You looked at it yesterday? Wow. Okay. Any, anything else? No, not really. Not the really. step team, I wasn't a part of that, but the step team was like yeah. iconic. Iconic, kids, yeah, the step team. Yeah. The step team, yeah. Dancing. That's Dancing. like the, really the only thing I did when I was younger. But yeah, yeah. Wasn't and you really were rather shy. Yeah, I, yeah, still kinda are, I right? also do remember, though, if I could just call you out really quickly, Dad. Uh -oh. The one time that I hated doing things, like, up on stage. Yeah. And there was, yeah, there was this one time I where, you no, okay. when I, I was sitting in, like, the children's program right over there, and I was waiting to dance, yeah. and I was so shy when I was younger, and I still really am, low-key, but I remember... <laughs> I was sitting there, and then they were like, yeah, and we're going to have Kennedy come up and do the prayer. And, like, if you, like, nobody would know this, but I hate praying in public. Like, it's like a thing. Like, I don't like praying in public. And I was like, what? And I, like, started freaking out internally. And then, like, I said, like, the most embarrassing, like, silly <laughs> prayer. And then I, like, stormed to my dad's office. I was like, they did. You signed me up to do it. <laughs> I was, like, so mad at you. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Brother Sister Campbell, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when you have conversations like this. Any, 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 any other highlight, any memories or highlights or uh, anything else you want to share before we wrap up, Reverend Anthony? Uh, and let me just thank God again for, for the two of you. You have been strong and stalwart members and um, uh, like a right and left hand where I'm concerned, and I appreciate you greatly. Reverend Campbell, any, anything you want to share? Uh, one of the things that I was really, really intrigued with when I came is pastor knowledge of the word. And he had the ability to allow the Lord to use him to, to minister the word. That blew my mind. Um, so if it's one thing that solidified that I was going to be here with you, because I love the word. And to see your commitment to the word and to the ministry, and, and your willingness to allow God to use you. So, and that's, that's been in my heart. So I said, Lord, yes, I'll obey and I'll serve under that ministry. So that was one of my highlights. One of the things I remember, I used to sit right here in the very front row. The choir, the praise team sit right in that area. And I, I came and I found myself amongst them. And Sister Cheryl, God rest her soul, she used to always tell me, come on and join us. Come on up, you know. And I would always try to get as far back as possible. She always brung me right back up. And I look at things of how the, the warmness of the members here from day one until this day hasn't changed. You know, we've, many people have gone on, beautiful people that kept the memory in my, uh, memory kept in my mind even now. And I think I look back sometimes at the little pictures I've seen of her, see of her when, I, when we were there. And I remember, you know, you know her bringing me up and ho always holding, make sure I don't get off the church. She'd save me and see. Yeah. And I remember those little things about the church, how the people here are so loving and it's like, when I'm not here on the days I'm sick, I feel you guys in such a way that I'm, I'm trying to get a, a lift to come out here. So those are the memories I look back at the warmth and how you guys are welcoming. I still, to this day, want to keep that in my heart as I've been doing. And you guys are just the, the best. The Word Church has been a home, and away from home for us, from our old church we came from, because it was hard to move from our church here. Coming here, just, right, it fit, just felt like we belonged here from day one. So we still to this day feel that way. Well, we are grateful to God for you and for your family, for Rabia, Cam, the kids, uh, everyone. Let me just um, make a couple of other statements and then we'll, we'll get ready to wrap up. Uh, I am grateful to God for his love, mercy, and grace where this church is concerned. I want to ask everyone on the stage to think about forward. I'm going to ask you to answer a question connected to um, what do you see in the future? What, what, what do you see in the future? Um, we know that our world has changed. Everybody amen to that? We become larger and smaller at the same time. So larger in terms of numbers, smaller in terms of, and more diverse in terms of communities. Uh, one of the things that our church uh, has in place now is a, a vision for the acres that are uh, across the parking lot, the 3.4 acres that we have here. And as a matter of fact, when you all go outside, again, you'll see, how many of y'all remember we had the community garden? You remember the community garden? Okay, yeah, everyone remembers that. So we now have the reboot of the community garden. And it's not this time us, it's members of people who are connected to a community garden project. And so they've actually begun. When you go to your car, when you leave church, you go out there, you'll see the beds beginning to be uh, redone. And you say, well, now, Pastor, why are we doing that there? We're going to build over there. We won't build over there for very likely uh, 18, 24 months or so. And in the meantime, in the between time, we have the garden going. It'll be up and going again, free produce for the community. Uh, our church has had a community focus over the years. We have one now. We partner with Lindbergh Elementary School. We do things with the city of Mesa. We do a number of things in the community that we're, that we're glad about. Our deacons ministry, um, Chairman Ely and others just served at Paz de Cristo uh, a few days ago. It's always something going on with community. But when we look forward, when we look ahead, one of the things that Pastor Ford is looking at is making the most, of course, of the facility that we're in. But we're looking to build the Word, Church, and Conference Center. The Word, Church, and Conference Center. Some of you will, will remember the video. And right when we launched it, COVID hit. And it kind of made us back up some. But it's a beautiful plan. 
that encompasses children's space and youth space and security space, indoor, outside space, a middle portion of the facility that is open to the sky that you can see up to the sun. We live in Arizona. Everybody okay? We live in AZ, and it rains here about a half an inch every 10 years. I'm being silly, but we have a lot of sunlight. We're looking at a space where we can rent space to uh, the churches are for events, so the Word Church and Conference Center. That speaks of land and, and possible building possibilities, but spiritually, we want to reach the world for Christ. And so we're trying to focus on how we can do that technologically. So we're online, we're on live stream and YouTube and Facebook and the church website, but we want to, I want to streamline that and really perfect that so that we can use it for the glory of God, Pete. So I'm interested in this panel's input uh, or your thoughts about uh, the church moving forward. I'm going to go back to Gab Ray because Gab and Kennedy are the youngest. And Gab, you know technology better than I do. And Ken knows it better than I do. Kennedy, of course, does our announcements for, for me even when she was out of state living there. And it doesn't even really matter. So I just, I, Kennedy does that for us. But, but, but help us with your thoughts on how we can reach the world for Christ going forward. Just, just briefly, just your initial thoughts. Yeah. Um, well, my initial thoughts immediately went to youth and like children's ministry. Um, I was a ministry leader here, a uh, children's ministry leader here at one point. So I would say um, maybe incorporating, like not necessarily moving forward, but kind of taking it back. Like we used to have lock-ins and we used to have um, – just a lot of outreach for children, a strong children's ministry, and I think that that's like honestly the most important thing because we have to build up the community, and I feel like right now a lot of the youth and children are like a little bit lost. So um, I think in the future, um, focus on the children's ministry and maybe taking it back to the roots, singing some hymns so they can know some. <laughs> Ooh, we talk about hymns <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you, Gabrielle. So, Gab is back in children's ministry. We appreciate that. Thank God for her. Ken? It's so funny. I was going to kind of say the same thing. I just like the best memories are, like, from yeah. children's church and stuff here, youth ministry. And, um, yeah, it made me think of um, that one verse. I don't know where it is. But um, it says the seed of the righteous will, will deliver. You know what I mean? And I think if we, like, keep planting seeds, I don't know, just in, like, youth of today, because there's just so much um, – like, influences, you know what I mean? And I feel like I had, like, such a strong influence of God, like, from here, you know? Um, and in my homes, too, so, like, just not, so I guess to change my answer from Gabrae's, to also, um, <laughs> yeah, but to equip, like, parents, too, because I feel like parents just don't know, like, like, I feel like you and mom made, and I feel like you guys helped parents make God look cool, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't make God, like, weird in the house. You know what I mean? Even though you are a pastor and stuff like that. Like, we listen to, like, fun music. Like, everything wasn't so serious. And I feel like maybe that's why kids are, like, so anti now. Because it's just like, you're going to hell or you're going to heaven. Like, you know what I mean? It's just no, like, <laughs> it's just so. You're going to hell or you're going to heaven, brother. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got you. But I think yeah, um, yeah. that's, like, where my memories come from. So I think if you guys yeah. do that, then yeah. that would be great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Deacon Davis and... Uh, Deacon Warren, Deacon Davis. Well, going forward, I, I, I want everybody in here to know and know this without a doubt. I love my church. Okay? I love each and every one of you. But I am kingdom-minded. Okay? I want to build the kingdom of God, and I want to make sure that you are part of the kingdom. So in order for us to be all be a part of the kingdom, we got to have our thoughts be his thoughts. We got to have our actions be guided by him so that when we do build that conference center, when we do build whatever else we might build, we'll be able to invite the neighborhood in and not allow our children to escape out. We got a lot of young men here that are on that verge, that bubble. Yeah. 
and we got to make sure that they are solid and grounded in the word of God so that when they go out in the world, they will be able to say, well, I'm going back home to my church. So the theme seems to be children, <laughs> which is good because without children and growth, there is extinction and dying. So we have to continue to grow. Now, kids don't have jobs. They got parents that have jobs. And some people say, well, I'm on a fixed income. But what about your time? Okay, and Maybe you don't have extra monies, but you have extra time because you're watching Family Feud, <laughs> the football game. <laughs> Take time to give back into the church, whether it's assisting in the children's church or it's assisting the pastor who shouldn't be moving all these chairs all the time, but does. <laughs> we have talents beyond our wallets and pocketbooks. And we got to stop holding them in and being stingy with them. Okay? Let's... Give our talents and let the kids see how we walk with that talk. Amen. Reverend Campbell and Reverend Campbell. Reverend Lorraine. Funny you say children. That first thing came to my mind when you thought, first thought thinking about that. You know, we have a beautiful children here. They're a future. But in order for the children to move forward, the parents has to be equipped. Yes. Equipped parents, equipped children. Once they're equipped in that aspect, then you know what? The children will follow suit. That's the future of our church. That's our leaders, our future leaders. So we have to equip them by equipping their parents and staying equipped to make sure that they themselves can come back and say, thus say the Lord, as a child of God. Reverend Anthony. Amen. You know, oftentimes I'm standing here, and when I look at our children, I could see what the Lord is doing. That seed has already been sowed. When I look at the next 34 years, none of us may be around, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So children are the ones that's going to continue. I like the vision that you have for the ministry, and that vision would continue until it comes to that place that is going. We could see it. If you have eyes to see, you could, if you have ears to hear, you're definitely going to know that exact. When you look at Kennedy, right? She may come back, right? She may come back to this ministry. We never know. They may go different places. But the Lord always draws them back home. So, amen. That's really good. Thank you, Reverend Anthony. Gabre, go ahead, Gab. Okay, I'm going to say one more thing really quick. Um, it's kind of piggybacking what you said, Deacon Warren, because that was like the second thing that popped into my mind, which is I feel like moving forward, um, don't be afraid to get involved. Like we all have talents and um, perspectives that we can bring. And I know Pastor Fort does such a good job of us coming here and filling us up with the word and just the choir and the praise team does a good job of leading worship and praise. But, you know, you can come to church to give as well. And just kind of also picking back on what Kennedy said, like seeing our parents, it, you can sacrifice for church. You know, it, you can inconvenience yourself for church, for your kids to be the example and I remember just seeing, like, all the adults in our lives when we were yet little, like, working however many hours, but making sure we were always here for Sunday school. So I just think, like, moving forward for the vision as well, like, looking into yourself and seeing where you can inconvenience yourself and sacrifice would also be great. All right. Everybody shout hallelujah. Come on, let's hallelujah. give God praise for his many blessings. I want to thank these uh, wonderful saved saints who are on the stage with me. None of them knew they were going to be up here until about three minutes before we started the broadcast. And so uh, I thank them for that. All of them know that I kind of operate very often uh, in a free spirit on days like this. And so I want to whisper a word of prayer. I want to ask you all to do this for me. Would you get on your device, whatever you use, Facebook, YouTube, live stream, um, whatever else we're on, the website, and just, what it was, Instagram, and just share, share, share. So I want you to find this conversation, which will be up uh, later today, and then would you share it with others? And not only this, but our broadcast. Let's pray together. 
And then we're going to get ready for late worship, and then we're going to be out. Today's our 34th church anniversary. God, how we thank you and we praise you for your son, the Christ, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the, uh, these wonderful saints who have joined me on stage today. I thank you for Deacon Larry Davis and Deacon uh, Equipment Bill Warren and for Reverend Anthony Campbell, Reverend Lorraine Campbell, Sister Gabrielle L. Jackson, and for Kennedy Lachey Saran Fort. And so, Father, I pray now that you would bless us as we conclude this conversation. May we be spurred on to righteousness in Jesus' name.